Just get off me now. Because you have no concern for the Negroes. Who were rallying to protest the brutal shooting of uh, seven unarmed Negroes in, in Chicago. And the press, your papers here in this city, uh, quoted Billy Graham of also saying that that pl uh, plane crash was an act of God. And if you All definitions of black people's standards and values have been defined by whites in a society basically European. As simple as it may seem, we have never made any definition of our condition, beauty standards, social etiquette. Even our names have been given us by white culture. And if it doesn't look proper for a person who is yellow or Chinese to be walking around named Murphy or Jones or Johnson or Bunch or Powell, uh, I think it would be just as improper for a black person or the so-called Negro in this country, as we're taught by the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, to walk around with these names. And therefore, he teaches us that during slavery, the same slave master who owned us uh, put his last name on us to denote that we were his property. And in this country, there's been no perceptible change, well, primarily because the white man has no reason to. He enjoys the highest standard of living. His government uh, enjoys dominance in world affairs. Why should he turn to me now and say, I want to share part of my good fortune with you? He has no reason to. I think there's going to be violence. Really reluctantly, because I had really believed always in, in the collegial, meditative, uh, discussive uh, experiment. I, I really believed uh, that, uh, and I do believe in a democracy, totally. I mean, I do believe that change is possible. But I also believe that property rights are sacred, that the, the power of the dominant class is not easily shared. And I came to, to reluctantly accept uh, the observations of Mao Zedong that, uh, that more or less permanent revolution is needed in order to secure effective social change. It's a horrible thing for a police chief to say. This revolution is filled with so many ironies, really. Uh, first you tell us that it is manly to keep your word. We're not asking for anything. We're not asking for any favors. All we want is what's ours. Executive type motherfuckers just looking for somebody just like you. I'm willing to admit that. I'm willing to admit that, that is the natural trend. What's wrong with you today? What we want is to have absolutely zero personal responsibility. We want to be able to point to the white boogeyman for all of our problems and all the circumstances that we are in. That sound like a man's job to you? It's not about unarmed black men anymore. It's about armed black men being protected now. I just think it's part of capitalism is to promote racism, you know, right? In order to um, make things work. If you feel better because you're white and you can get a job, uh, you use that. Things like liabilities, employment history, credit record, and other relevant variables that should have been considered. It should not Here's how it works. Let's say a big bank wants a law that would force taxpayers to bail them out again if they repeat the exact same reckless behavior that crashed the global economy in 2008. Not exactly the most popular idea with the public, and Congress knows that. That should be the end of it. But that's where the money comes in. It's perfectly legal for our bank to hire a team of lobbyists, whose entire job is to make sure that the government gives the bank what it wants. Then, those lobbyists can track down members of Congress who regulate banks and help raise a ton of money for their re-election campaigns. It's perfectly legal for those lobbyists to offer those same politicians million-dollar jobs at their lobbying firm. Then, those lobbyists can literally write the language of this new bailout law themselves and hand it off to the politician they just buttered up with campaign money and lucrative job offers. And it's perfectly legal for those politicians to take the lobbyist-written language and sneak it through Congress at the last second. So now you've got a law that greatly benefits the banks and the whole process can start over. This is how a bill becomes a law. A special interest hires some lobbyists, those lobbyists collect campaign contributions, offer jobs, and then write the laws that Congress then passes to help those same special interests. This happens every day on every single issue with politicians of both parties. In the last five years alone, the 200 most politically active companies in the United States spent $5.8 billion influencing your government. Those same companies got 4.4 trillion in taxpayer support. And that's trillion, with a T. 
And that's just the top 200 companies. Never mind every other special interest, every union, every trade association, and every billionaire. Every single one of them can use their money to buy political influence. You know, there's this idea out there that this only became a problem after the Supreme Court's Citizens United decision in 2010. But the data goes back almost 40 years, and the results are clear. Corruption is legal in America. And as long as it is, anyone who can spend money to buy political influence will. What that suggests, and this was confirmed by subsequent studies, is that the actual issue here is a question of class discrimination, not an issue of race discrimination. In other words, the reason that people are discriminating against Lakeisha, as opposed to against Steve Johnson or Steve Washington, is because people are actually using the first name as a stand-in for social class. It's a very wayward, criminal, backward, illiterate, uneducated, and whatever other negative uh, characteristics you can think of, to just take one Negro and stick him in, in college uh, with, uh, with the aid of the six, I think it's uh, 15,000 troops, and at a cost of $6,000 is a disgrace. It's a waste of taxpayers' money. It's a farce. It's hypocrisy. Because if it's right for uh, one Negro to be forced into that university, then every Negro in the state of Mississippi who is qualified has the same right to go to that university. And if the government is not uh, ready and willing to uh, enforce the right of every Negro in the state of Mississippi, then, uh, in my opinion, sir, it's only hypocrisy to pretend that uh, they are for justice uh, by pushing one Negro in and blowing it up all over the world to make it look like they're solving the problem when millions of black people in that state are still going to uh, segregated schools. Do we have a thorough knowledge of ourselves, of our own kind, and uh, racial dignity? It should not be particularly surprising that discrimination in the past has impact on the actual income of people who are living in the areas that were denied loans. That shouldn't be a major surprise. But no, I don't want you to take this the wrong way. Would you like to be my girl? <laughs> or get all mad or nothing. Well, when was the last time you went looking for a job? Yeah, I would like to be a girl. How many goddamn times do I have to tell you this? It ain't no jobs out here for the black man. The system is keeping me... You can't see how the system is keeping me down? Huh? A person is sitting on a warm stove and you get ready to let him up, no matter how slow you are, he has patience because he, it's only warm. But the masses of black people who are sitting on a hot stove, they're impatient. And no matter how fast you say progress is being made toward letting them up, that progress is not fast enough for them. Risk areas. What is being proposed cannot be passed off euphemistically. Another factor is that if history does make a difference, then if you are denied loans in a particular area, and if there's less money in those areas, and as crime goes up, and as property taxes kick in, there's not enough money to take, and as schools get worse, obviously that's going to continue to have effects in that particular area. That doesn't mean the same people are living in that area who always lived in that area, or that people who grew up in that area in 1960 necessarily have to live in that area, or that their grandkids have to live in that area in 2020. We don't want your schools, but we want our schools to be the highest and the best possible for our black progeny. See, what people don't understand, we are saying, and we're not asking, you see, the die is cast, as I said, we're not asking, we're saying this is the way it's going to be. The studies that supposedly determine that your implicit bias results in real world action are deeply flawed. I believe that the white man has done a great injustice to the black man in this country mm -hmm. by having kidnapped our people and, uh, and brought us here and down to the level that we're on today, and today, instead of approaching the factors that their uh, or original mistake has created. Instead of approaching these factors objectively and realistically, the greatest sin that they're doing now is trying to, by, is trying to pretend that they never committed a crime, that they never did any wrong, and it's simply because he is pointing out the we, real we, factors we, we in the problem. Little, we have a little time left. You don't have to hurry so <laughs> Every bargain ain't a bargain. America kind of let the brothers and sisters down. Let me see if I can call them aliens back. I'm going to tell them we're having a one-cent sale. They can get the rest of y'all for a penny.